Hi everybody. Uh, first of all, apologies for uh, for the noise. They're doing a little bit of construction next door, uh, but we'll just uh, work this, these background noises into the patch we're going to be working on today. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the buffer object, buffer tilde. Um, this is a great way of manipulating audio files in Max. Uh, and the buffer object itself, all it does is it reserves a certain amount of memory, a certain amount of space on your computer for a particular audio file. And that can be either loaded into the buffer object, uh, it can be recorded directly from Max, um, it can be drawn in or created uh, in different ways. Uh, and so to use the buffer object, first we need to give it a name. This can be absolutely any name you want, and all it does is it identifies this particular buffer. If you're using multiple buffers, you need to use different names. Otherwise, the, they're gonna be referencing each other and it's gonna you're gonna create a mess okay so give this a unique name um, and then it's gonna need a duration in milliseconds in this case we'll have a two second buffer name and duration in milliseconds again give this a unique name and all this name does is it allows you to identify this uh, this buffer uh, if you we were to lock our patch and double click on this you see this will eventually be a waveform but you see that uh, this is the two seconds of memory, essentially, that are reserved for whatever audio file will eventually be called uh, Bolanos in this patch. Um, we can read an audio file with a replace message. Oop. Attach this to the left inlet of the buffer object. Click on that and you can load any audio file that you want. Uh, but what we're going to be looking at today is recording directly into the buffer object. So with the record tilde object, if you were to give this the same name as the buffer object, you don't need to worry about the duration. That's already been determined right here. But you need to give this the name of this buffer object, or it won't know where to record. In this case, we're saying, we're telling Max, record whatever signal is coming in here to this buffer, this reserved space. Um, and in order to start recording and stop recording, we need to send this a one and a zero. So one is start recording, and zero is stop. So you recall that the toggle object, when it's clicked, it sends a one, and when it's off, it sends a zero. And we, of course, need some sort of uh, signal, easy ADC with a meter to make sure we're not clipping. We're going to send both channels of the input into the record object. Um, currently, there's nothing in here. And if I were to click on this, it would record for two seconds. Now, again, our buffer is only two seconds long. We only have two seconds of memory reserved for this. So if you continue to record past those two seconds, it'll just truncate it and you'll lose anything that you, uh, that you play after that. So you gotta be a little bit careful. You don't want this to be ridiculously long because then you're only gonna be using a Maybe you might only be using the beginning of your buffer. You don't want it to be too short that it cuts off your samples that you're recording. So we'll, I'll just record a terrible whistle right here. About two seconds. And it did, I don't think it truncated it too much, but if you double click on this record object, now you see the waveform of what we just, what we just played. If you double click on the buffer, you see the same thing. So you can see these two things are connected sort of under the hood because they have one common argument. Let's move this to the side, just to keep everything organized. Um, now, all we did was record. We have no way of actually playing that back. So there are a couple ways to play back the data in a buffer. The simplest is the play object, play tilde. Again, you want the same exact argument. You need a gain slider to be able to control the volume. Easy DAC so we can hear what's going on. Uh, we'll turn this up and we'll send this a toggle. Beautiful. Spectacular. Uh, again, the one is play from beginning and then the zero is stop. Um, so if you, you see it always plays back from the beginning of the of the buffer okay very simple
nothing nothing terribly complicated or difficult about this if you were to re-record that whistle was a little bit longer than the buffer so it will probably have gotten truncated you can hear that a little bit um, if we want to change the duration of course we can do that four second buffer Very nice. Now the nice thing about the play object is that it can also accept a signal. You might remember the line tilde object from when we were creating ABSR envelopes. Um, if we were to send us a signal, we can uh, have a little bit more precise control over the, the way that the play object reads through this buffer. Um, so remember that the signal, uh, the line tilde object wants a message that has a start time, comma, stop time, or starting point, ending point, uh, and then duration, how long it takes to get from point A to point B, the start to the end. Um, so in this case, we're going to have start at zero, meaning start at the beginning of the buffer, and at 4,000, because we have a four second buffer. So we're going to start at millisecond zero, read through to the very end, and we're going to do that over 4,000 milliseconds. It can be a little bit confusing because in, in uh, our case right now, both of these numbers represent milliseconds. This is the amount of time that the line object takes to read through this. This argument right here, is the duration of our buffer. So it's gonna read from zero to 4,000 across the entire duration of the buffer over 4,000 milliseconds. So if we click on this, it'll be the exact same uh, effect than if we were to just hit play right here. So that's actually not that useful, but if you wanted to play back twice as fast, now we're gonna read through the entire buffer I'm going to read from 0 to 4,000, but over the course of two seconds. And you can also play back half speed. We're going to read four seconds of buffer over eight seconds. So you see it has a little bit of the same versatility as the playlist object. Uh, but it allows you to record directly into the buffer that you're using, uh, directly into MaxMSP, uh, and you can manipulate it. You can, for example, record samples in real time during a performance and then have them play back later at different speeds, uh, manipulate them in different ways. Um, you can also play, you can have multiple of these messages, zero. If you were to start at 4,000 and then read to zero over the course of four seconds, this would play it back backwards. Uh, you can play it back backwards again at different different rates. Um, play it really fast. You know, uh, doesn't really matter. Um, now things get a little bit more interesting when you actually use a function object. Um, in this case, we want, um, <clears throat> we're going to use a similar line object. I'll disconnect this. Notice how, for example, just one quick thing. If this signal is connected right here, this is sending continuous information to the play object. So if I were to hit play right here, nothing happens because the signal is overriding this message. So. Right. You can't have both of these things connected at the same time because the signal again will override this message. So we're going to have a line tilde object just like we would normally in ADSR envelope. Um, we're going to connect this to the play object. Now we want the, in this case, the domain here is going to be like these two values, the first two values, 0 to 4,000. So we want the domain 
to be the same as the length of our buffer. Um, and then we want the range set range, uh, which is the domain again is the x-axis and the range is the y-axis. And the set range is two values, zero to 4,000. Clicking on both of these. Now if we, whenever we push this button, it will read through whatever we plot right here. So if you wanted it to read from zero to 4,000 over the course of uh, 4,000 milliseconds. If you wanted to do it over the course of three milliseconds. Um, oh no, these are backwards. Okay. So in this case, it only reads the first three seconds of the buffer from zero to 3000, and it does so over four seconds. Okay, see here it got truncated a little bit. So this is, this uh, value right here is basically the duration of your buffer, and this is how line reads through it. Uh, anyway, the point of this is that you can have slightly more interesting and complex ways of reading through the, <clears throat> reading through the buffer. So you can read through forwards, and then when you're about 3,000 seconds into the buffer, it'll start reading through backwards again. It'll do this over the course of 4,000 milliseconds. So you get some, some pretty interesting effects. Um, just playing around a little bit with the, with the um, envelope right here. If you were to do this over 8,000 seconds, you'd get more or less normal playback speed halfway through the buffer and then back. Oh no, there we go, yeah. So it plays normal and then it plays it backwards. Uh, anyway, this is not a common way to use the play object. It's just a strange little tangent. I wanted to demonstrate. Um, but this is a very, very simple way of, of playing back whatever it is you record into your buffer. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate the, the um, groove tilde object, which is a lot more interesting, a lot more versatile.